Welcome to the Good Intentions Show. I'm Tim Ray, and I'm also the founder of the United Intentions Foundation. Today we're going to have a great show. We're going to be talking about spiritualism and what that actually means. It's a big buzzword these days, and people get caught up into the religious aspect of our defining our nature. But today we're going to, I think, advance it to a, another understanding. I'm here with a very special guest, Reverend Richard Burdick from Unity North in Marietta, Georgia. And we're very excited to have you here and to get deep into this uh, understanding of what spiritualism, because, you know, I always had to take, our Richard, that do are we here to ascend to heaven or are we here to descend here to earth to create heaven on earth? I mean, it's a big question to ask, isn't it, from a different perspective? But before we actually put you on the spot and have you answer that question, tell me about your spiritual path and how it led to the unity spiritual path. Wow, how much time do you have? <laughs> uh, my spiritual path began, I believe, the minute I walked, entered the planet and was born into an environment, a family environment in California. And the religion I, of my upbringing was a religion of hard work. But I saw that through hard work, lives could be changed. And that began uh, a process of a passion of mine of knowing I could make a difference on the planet through what I did. That translated into doing music and I found myself behind a piano and I realized in front of a choir that I could change people's lives to help them discover things and truths about themselves that they didn't know were there. It was a natural byproduct from the wall and orchards to the piano to uh, leading a, a church ministry which gives me a venue, a portal by which I can do that work at a tremendous frequency. Interesting you say, because when I hear story after story about how music has such a spiritual uh, aspect to it, or, or people find themselves, if that if that's the right word, uh, it sounds like music might have been a catalyst for you? Uh, absolutely. I think it is for most people. Music bypasses the intellectual overthinking of God, of who we are, and what we're doing on this planet. Music goes right to the level of the heart, the feeling nature, and I believe that's where spirituality has its deepest roots. Yeah, well, and I agree wholeheartedly with you on that. In fact, I think science even now is catching up to the heart math, how the heart has a brain, and the brain is even more powerful than our brain that we have in our in, in, located in the center of our head. Well, right? something we teach in Unity is that every cell of our body has uh, wisdom within it, has capacity, has consciousness, has goodness within it, and it's not necessarily localized, but the heart is a portal whereby... All of it can be activated. My my day to day cell uh, being of a cell within the human humanity. Yeah. My day to day being of a body. My day to day mental uh, capacities. My feeling capacities are all awakened through the portal of my feeling nature. Hmm. Well, I think when you have that component, and apparently you you understand what it is to feel, and I don't think you or probably any person who could be a reverend and not actually feel, otherwise you wouldn't be so compelled to be able to share this message. And uh, this message that you share at Unity North uh, and share with your, uh, I don't say constituents, but your um, My family, your family, <laughs> even better. Um, do you find on, on a weekly basis that you're inspired, the information is downloaded or inspired through you, or do you pull on just your experiences or the mixture yeah. of all? You know, it'd be great to say that I needed the church or the community or the family for that to happen. We're designed. That's the way we're organically designed to be feeling beings. When you are in a community and you're in a group of people that are committed to growing themselves, to being more kind, compassionate, generous beings, there's an exponential increase. There's an amplification of the feeling, and it's felt at depth. So I often say when you're in a spiritual community, be prepared because your, your wins are going to be amplified. They're going to be greater. The, the ahas that you have, and sometimes the pains are amplified as well because it's not just one emotion. It's all the emotions that lead us to a greater understanding of our divine nature. Well, interesting because it sounds like you are you found yourself in, like you said, in a family that... Uh, identify with you you share your feelings with they share their feelings with it really is like in a family atmosphere have you in the past tried other religions or churches and uh you, what was your experience like with um you know matching that frequency like you have here yeah well every, we're all operating at a different frequency and we're all making our way home a different way 
And uh, so in Unity, we don't say that one is better. One frequency is better than another. So I can go to the Baptist Church. Or a couple weeks ago, I spent time at the Islamic Center, the West Cobb Islamic Center. I have Jewish friends. I have atheists. Everybody's finding their own way home. And the frequencies are necess necessary to be in harmony. So like a great piano, I'm one note. The, the Islamic Center is another note. When those two notes come together, there's also an amplification. So to diminish one or say one is not necessary, I think is is coming farther away from home as opposed to returning home. Well, it's a great point and uh, brilliantly stated. But we find ourselves often, even in this world that we live in right now, presently 2018, that a lot of people find that the divisiveness between religions and beliefs. Uh, and it sounds like you have a, you, your philosophy overpasses that or it doesn't subscribe to that type of treatment. Religion in its, in its current form on the planet uh, is a human construct. All of them are human constructs, human uh, beings trying to figure out where we came from, where we're going, who we are, and how we are connected and related to each other. Eventually, we have to come to the place on our spiritual path where those tools, where we transcend them. They're no longer necessary and needed because uh, the, the awareness of our spirituality, of our oneness with God, is a state of being. And it is not an intellectual exercise. It is a state of being that transcends the thoughts. So the thoughts take us there, the books take us there, the prophets take us there. But if those human constructs define us only, yes, we're in a divisive environment and we're living in a place of duality, which is going to be the very block to keep us from going home. Well, you brought in so many good points. And when we get back from break, uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, this awakening, this as even in the Bible talks about the second coming and what that means. And, and can it mean other things than perhaps what, uh, uh, perhaps in the Western culture they describe it, or even other cultures how they describe what this second coming means. And we'll, uh, we'll just get our philosophy and thoughts on, on that topic. Is that okay? That sounds great. All right, we're going to take a break and hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tim Ray, founder of the United Tensions Foundation. I want you to imagine a world where bullying doesn't exist. Or how about your child wakes up in the morning and is grateful for everything they have, or they actually believe in himself or herself? On top of that, imagine this. Imagine your child understands that their thoughts and feelings create what they experience. All this is possible with our Imagine If program, and it's all about social-emotional learning, showing children how their thoughts and feelings create what they experience. To learn more, go to imagineifprogram.org. What if you could have whatever you desired with a simple thought? Wishful thinking? Science has proven that thoughts can change our reality. Join the movement and be part of an interactive virtual community that helps you take control of your life through the power of intentions. Learn to create the life you desire, one intention at a time. Sign up today for your free account and start creating. Hi, I'm Tim Ray founder of the United Intentions Foundation, and how would you like to have a formula for manifesting whatever you want in your life? You think it's that easy? Well, maybe not that easy, but you could start out with this. Understanding that it's all about creating a state of being. Your state of being, how you act throughout your day, how you feel about yourself throughout the day, and being conscious of that in any given moment. And understanding these three principles, repetition, expectancy, and meaning. And adding that those three principles into your life could change and create the state of being that you would need to actually manifest what you want. Remember, repetition, expectancy, expecting what you really want, repeating what you want, and also adding meaning to what you want creates that state of being, a fertile land and fertile soil for you to attract what you truly want to experience. To learn more, go to unitedintentions.org. All right, we are back with Richard Burdick from Unity North in Marietta, Georgia here. And we were just talking about the second coming. I, you know, you read the apocalypse, you read the, uh, you know, the, um, the revelations and, and the, basically the Western Bible, the, the New Testament, the Old Testament. It seems like things are destined, they're portraying that it has to happen. And a lot of uh, even Christians and other religions too, they, there's a set sense of like, this has to happen because God said this will happen. Uh, my, my take is, 
could it be that we're, we're supposed to hear about these potential realities that we, we may be experiencing, especially when it comes to this death and destruction aspect of it? Is it more of a heads up, hey, if you change your way, this could happen? Or is it something that you believe has to happen in, in, yeah. your, in your philosophy there? Well, there's two ways to look at those scriptures that you mentioned. Yeah. One is that it's the inerrant word of God that has been spoken. And that's not the way unity sees it. Unity sees it. It's humankind trying to, like I said, where we come from, who are we, and where we're going. And it's, it is a warning from the mind of humanity that this, these things could happen. Those scriptures you mentioned are very visual. And there's <laughs> always metaphysical meaning behind them. There's, there's good that can be found underneath it. And those particular scriptures are, are a clear indication that humanity is waiting around for a savior, waiting around for some event to happen, to take us out of our suffering, to take us out of our pain. Our humanity lives that way. We go to the doctor looking for a magic pill. We go to our religions, our churches looking for a magic pill. We go to our scriptures for a magic pill. When all of that stuff that's happening in those books is an internal process, not an external one. And yes, it can be changed. You know, it's not a predestined, this is the way it's going to be, because that's a pretty horrible thing to think about those horsemen coming and the, the end of times. Well, the end of times is going to be an internal process where it's we no, live, no longer live, think, feel the way we have that's gotten us to this place. We have to go to a deeper reality. And so the change is happening, uh, not necessarily in a book or not in our human uh, constructs, but inside our heart. So you're looking more at an individual transformation or an individual awakening within of connection to that higher power, to God, to, you know, prime creator, wherever you describe it, that. Source. It happens individually, first and foremost. It has to. The only place I can change, the only place I can transform is within. But as I do it, and as you do it, Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, in the name of transformation, in the name of a higher frequency or vibration, then it's happening for humanity. So the cells come back together and operate at a frequency at such a place that the earth is forever changed. It's interesting. I, I, it's fantastic information. It, I always find it so, uh, not confusing, but a, a challenge to comprehend the individual awakening and how that affects the collective awakening, whatever that means. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want to share some thoughts on uh, how they mean to interact, or in your opinion. Because I'm... Well, you know, often we talk about prayer in unity, and we think, oh, we pray for others. We're, we're, and the reality is, I teach, that prayer has no effect on you. My holding of an idea for you has no effect unless you are receptive. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding a truth. I'm holding a divine idea in my mind, in my heart, in my being. And I'm, I'm changing the, the immediate uh, sphere of my being when I interact with you or I think of somebody in China or in Russia or across some other ocean. If they are receptive to that environment, energy is not bound by time and space. So there is a, a changing that can happen from the receptive environment that we are both leading. So, 100th monkey, enough of us start to believe in something. We don't have to even know each other at a human level. But we know ourselves at a spiritual level. And those vibrations, again, find their way across oceans, across time even. Now, we're not going to get into that today. <laughs> but that can we change the future? I believe we can. That we're not a predestined humanity with an inevitable end. Because as those frequencies meet, and enough of us are diligent and faithful about holding that place here first, and then holding it between us, we change the direction of our entire human race. Well, that sounds very hopeful, at least, at least from my perspective, what you believe. Because, I, like you said earlier, a lot of people are waiting for somebody like a superhero, Jesus, or whoever it may be, coming back to save them. And it almost is like a diffusion responsibility. It, exactly it, what it is. I've given all the responsibilities to some great Savior who's going to make it okay. And the reality is Jesus is alive. The Christ essence is alive within us. And the second coming that you mentioned... But I say the second, the third, the fourth coming is happening sometimes ten times in one day. <laughs> As I am more awake and more aware of my divine nature and your divine nature and the divine nature of all creation, then there's another coming of that consciousness that, that Jesus brought to the planet. A, a Christ consciousness. Yeah, exactly. Jesus didn't see people broken. He didn't see the world broken. He called out the wholeness that was there. And he didn't wait for somebody else to do it. And he said clearly, the Father and I are one. We are to follow him as a magnificent example. 
to know the father and I, the mother, the energy of life, the energy of creation and I are one. Now, it's not just me because it's you and it's everybody who's ever walked the face of the planet. Now, we're all at different levels of awake, awakeness to that reality. And and the more that we can awaken from within ourselves, the more you, you believe that we'll connect with other people it, during their awakening. Water yeah. seeks its own level. And if I'm holding that vibration, I will find and attract to myself physically and spiritually, again, across oceans, the people that are vibrating at that same level. But we must be diligent and faithful and quit giving the responsibility to a religion or to a teacher or to a prophet, whether they be contemporary or ancient. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it explains a lot and explains how often many different religions can kind of get sidetracked when they deviate from that understanding. Uh, from that awakening, and I, I do, I do understand, and I agree that we can't wait for just a, an outside personified being to come save us. We you know, daddy or mommy, we need to wake within ourselves that Christ spirit, that source, that that loving energy, whatever it may be. Um, what's your advice for people in in a minute or less before we go on another break here for people to find that awakening? Well, we have to make a collective and individual shift from container consciousness. The human mind and the human ego has gotten so fascinated with the containers that we've missed the nutrition that's inside the container. So my container is better than yours. And we miss that the Christ consciousness is the same thing as the Buddha nature, the same thing as the Atman, which is in the Hindu tradition. There is a divine essence that's inside of it. And when we lose our diligent focus to the container, to the book, to the teacher, we can then have something far more powerful that's on the inside. And so my job is to look for it first within myself, but to look for it in you as well. Mm, wonderful. And we're going to come back with uh, Reverend Richard Burdick and we'll be talking about what's next. What's next for the world here and how do we apply our spiritualism, our awakening within uh, to create a better world. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tim Ray, founder of the United Intentions Foundation. I want you to imagine a world where bullying doesn't exist. Or how about your child wakes up in the morning and is grateful for everything they have, or they actually believe in himself or herself. On top of that, imagine this. Imagine your child understands that their thoughts and feelings create what they experience. All this is possible with our Imagine If program. And it's all about social emotional learning, showing children how their thoughts and feelings create what they experience. To learn more, go to imagineifprogram.org. What if you could have whatever you desired with a simple thought? Wishful thinking? Science has proven that thoughts can change our reality. Join the movement and be part of an interactive virtual community that helps you take control of your life through the power of intentions. Learn to create the life you desire, one intention at a time. Sign up today for your free account and start creating. Hi, I'm Tim Ray, founder of the United Intentions Foundation, and how would you like to have a formula for manifesting whatever you want in your life? You think it's that easy? Well, maybe not that easy, but you could start out with this. Understanding that it's all about creating a state of being. Your state of being, how you act throughout your day, how you feel about yourself throughout the day, and being conscious of that in any given moment. And understanding these three principles, repetition, expectancy, and meaning. And adding that, those three principles into your life could change and create the state of being that you would need to actually manifest what you want. Remember, repetition, expectancy, expecting what you really want, repeating what you want, and also adding meaning to what you want creates that state of being, a fertile land and fertile soil for you to attract what you truly want to experience. To learn more, go to unitedintentions.org. We are back with Richard Burdick from Unity North in Marietta, Georgia, and we're talking about the awakening, uh, the awakening within ourselves and finding our own spirituality. And, and it really almost, I have to say, it's probably, it's an individual experience, something that you can't really understand on an intellectual level. It has to be a felt experience. God, God is a state of being, is a state of experience. But, you know, it is happening at an individual level, but we sometimes get pretty selfish in that reality because we are affecting the entire human race. And so the work that I do individually I'm doing it for my grandchildren, for my great-grandchildren, and that they will inherit a world that's a little bit more conscious, a little bit more awake, hopefully a little bit more kind and loving. Well, you can't say more than that. Now, I started out the show, uh, Richard, with 
you know, are we here to, a, a lot of people I talked to, like, I can't wait to get out of this world. You know, this world is <laughs> terrible, you know. <laughs> I can't, I'm dying here. And, uh, and so there's this kind of preconception of we want to become, we want to send out of this world and, and go to this other place called heaven or whatever it may be. And then there's other philosophies where are we here to create heaven on earth, descend as spiritual beings, create an environment where a spiritual being can be fully expressive and mm-hmm. be connected, you know? Uh, either either one of them, is it either or, or one or the or, or is it neither, neither well, one of them? Unity would say, choose the one that works for you and, and live it. And if it makes your life better and makes your environment better, great, keep doing it. Unity would tell us that we're not here by accident. We're not having an earthly experience, a physical experience by accident. But there's a divine appointment. There's something for me to learn, something for me to contribute. And so it is a gift. This this walk that I'm on is a gift from the universe that I have gifted myself, that the the world has given me. Why would I waste it waiting for some other time, some far off distant time of reward or punishment to to have the great awakening. Let it happen with every action I take, every word that I speak, every relationship that I have is a great classroom. Mm-hmm. There's something to gather from it that is making my soul more what my soul is designed to be. Mm. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, and you bring up a, an interesting point too, is we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. So, but we're in this three-dimensional world for a reason. I mean, whether, whether you know the reason or I know the reason or whoever else knows the reason, um, there has to be some purpose. You know, it could be just simply as experiencing joy or it could be some other, I don't know. But um, how do you define or do you even define spiritual activism? I mean, what's what do, what, what do we do out here in the world if we're just spiritual beings? Right. Well, one of the basic tenets of unity is our fifth principle, and that is the truth that I know is the truth that I demonstrate. That which I know to be true spiritually, I'm in this body, this great vehicle. I need to do something to demonstrate that. Now, it is not mine to tell you what you're supposed to think or what you're supposed to feel or how you're supposed to experience God. I say, when somebody does that for you, run as fast as you can out the back door. <laughs> but it is what I say often, my, my purpose in this life is to shine my light so brightly, actively, that the people around me cannot help but know that that same light exists in them. Do you find politics sneaking into churches? Oh, (laughs) politics and religion are in bed together, and I think that's part of what has uh, divided our planet. The wars that have been done in the name of God have politics hand in hand involved in that process. And so I work very diligently from my platform to keep politics out of the pulpit. Well, you know, that's what I find a challenge for not only reverends such as yourself, but across the board in any religion, is balancing between a spiritual activism or being engaged in your community, um, you know, because decisions are made all the time. You know, you're, the, the taxes that you have to pay or not pay are made through uh, this in this world that could affect your ability to get your word out, right? You know, so there's a, you know, give on to Caesar, right? What is Caesar's yep. mentality? And then there's your spiritual belief. Uh, does it you ever find that it it changes some of the direction that whether your church or you you on a personal level go based on whatever the political environment is happening? Yeah, there are always lines in the sand. We're having a human experience together, and the basic unity tenet is really at the foundational core of all of us. Whether we be Republican, Democrat, Baptist, uh, a New Age, we all want the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then when we return to those core tenets. I believe that the Republicans and Democrats all want a a united states. I believe that the Baptists and the the atheists all want a united humanity. And when we can look beyond the different path that any person is taking to that core belief system, there's a little bit more tolerance, first of all, a little bit more understanding that can happen. I may not agree with the method that, that you are wanting to get to the place of home or to take the country or to take our humanity to the place of home. But I will meet you at the level, the energetic vibration of we want the same thing. And I find that just vibrating at that place creates a little bit more peace on the planet. When I don't make you wrong or bad or evil because of your belief system, just because the path you're taking up the mountain is different than mine, then we can intersect and we can have time together. And I believe that it's one dialogue at a time between differing parties that's taking us home. 
It seems to be a very general approach, your, your philosophy. It is very general. And gentle, I mean, gentle approach. Well, general and gentle, gentle. Okay. you know, but it's hard to argue with kindness. Yeah. It's hard to argue with <laughs> compassion, very you true. know, and, and of course, uh, when we get political, we talk about give a man a fish and he eats for a day and uh, teach him to fish and he eats for a lifetime. I think both are absolutely necessary. Let me feed you today so that you can remember who you are, be okay, that your family is going to be okay, and now let me teach you to fish. Mm. Because I believe there's an innate knowledge, an innate wisdom that I don't have a corner on the market, but together we will find the greater way. That's wonderful. If people want to learn more about uh, what you do and your spiritual community, what, what, how can they find out? We have a, we're a 24-7 facility. Unity North is active all the time, but our services are at 9.15, and 11.15 on Sunday mornings. We have a, one, a Wednesday night wrapping with the Rev, very much like this, <laughs> where we just discuss ideas, and everybody is ordained as wise and intelligent. So we discuss ideas and disagree and agree and find mutuality in, in again, those common divine ideas okay. that we share. Wonderful. Is there a website they can go to? Yeah, www.unitynorth.org. Wonderful. Richard, I really appreciate you coming in and spending oh, my the time pleasure. with us. Brilliant and uh, such important information to share. Thank you so much. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you guys for watching again. And remember, you can change your reality by the power of your intentions. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.